If you're a Sonic fan, 2017 is shaping up to be a year for the record books. Back in August, Sonic Mania blew the doors off expectations, becoming one of the best platform games ever made. And Sonic Forces, strange though it may be, still has some potential. But this week, we have the Sonic Amateur Games Expo 2017. You may never have heard of it, but this annual online event brings together creators and Sonic fans the world over to deliver brand new experiences based on Sega's Blue Hedgehog and beyond. It's this very expo which sparked the creation of Retro Sonic by Kristen Whitehead, which after a long and windy path, ultimately led to the creation of Sonic Mania. Sage is also the catalyst which led to excellent games like Freedom Planet and Spark the Electric Jester, two great action games that you should absolutely play. For this video, however, I want to focus on two of the higher profile projects to make an appearance this year at Sage, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 HD and the first attempt to remake Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. Yes, that's Sonic 2006. Curious? Let's jump in then. In many ways, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 remains just about my favorite game in the series. This second installment features incredibly refined level design, impressive visuals, and a great soundtrack. It's also a sequel that almost didn't happen. After the first game, series creator Yuji Naka famously walked out on Sega of Japan before one Mark Cerny managed to persuade Naka to instead join his San Francisco-based Sega Technical Institute, which led to the creation of Sonic 2. And now, thanks to the hard work of a group of dedicated fans, Sonic 2 returns with an interesting HD remake. This is a project that has been in limbo for years, but was restarted back in 2014 with new recruits joining the team. After a tremendous effort, the team has released a brand new demo for its latest work, this time including full three zones, all recreated using high resolution assets. This includes Emerald Hill Zone, the Chemical Plant Zone, and Hilltop Zone. Like Christian's retro engine, Sonic 2 HD uses its own custom engine known as Sonic Orca, designed to recreate the physics and mechanics of classic Sonic games while supporting high resolutions and new features. The engine is written entirely in C Sharp and uses OpenGL to power its visuals. What this ultimately means is that Sonic 2 HD is fast and smooth, at least provided you have a decent graphics card. At first glance, after spending so many years with the original game, this HD remake can look a little strange, but give it time and it might grow on you. Despite the leap in fidelity, it manages to feel rather faithful to the original game. When you compare the two side by side, it's clear that the artists did a fantastic job capturing the essence of Sonic 2. The design of the foreground tiles are spot on, while the backgrounds now feature smooth new gradients. Even the same purse scanline scrolling that Sonic 2 relies so heavily on is fully present in this iteration of the game. The backgrounds look awesome in motion. The new rendition of Chemical Plant Zone is especially nice, with gorgeous deep red hues mixed with soft blue lights from the buildings, all above glowing liquid. Even the subtle slowdown present when using the tube system is replicated here. But it's all the new animation work that really sticks out. Trees now blow in the wind, the surface of the chemicals now bubble realistically, and flowers dance below Sonic's feet. This applies to characters and objects as well. Sonic receives a huge number of new animation frames to go along with his new look, which fortunately is still based on his old look. He also smoothly rotates around loops now, unlike the original game. Rings now feature more frames of animation, as do enemies. Everything was redrawn in high resolution and each object uses real frames of animation rather than a marionette system that you might have seen in other high resolution side scrollers. Compared to the last official attempt at bringing 2D Sonic to HD resolutions with Sonic the Hedgehog 4, this remake of Sonic 2 feels true to the spirit of the original games. Beyond the visual improvements, there are also new transitions between each levels, taking a cue from Sonic the Hedgehog 3 clear Act 1 and the game seamlessly moves over to Act 2. In addition, the music has been remixed for each zone, and the second act of each zone then features its own unique track, again similar to Sonic 3.
Even for an early demo like this, character handling is spot on. It's not quite as refined as Sonic 2 itself or Sonic Mania, but it's surprisingly close and a far cry again from Sonic the Hedgehog 4 with its non-existent physics. I did notice some minor changes to go along with it though. Certain springboards now act slightly differently for instance. Normally I hit this board right here and easily avoid the enemy, but in Sonic 2 HD, the game likes to slam me right into this foe here in the tree. There's plenty of little things like this in the demo. Just minor issues to be sure, and it makes the gameplay ever so slightly differently. It's ultimately still very good in this regard, however. And it's not like Sonic 2 itself is perfect. Take certain loops too fast in the Mega Drive and you get things like this. Not a common problem, but it does happen. The one complaint I have with this HD version thus far is the input response. Even using a fast PC monitor, the game just feels slightly leggy compared to the Mega Drive original or even Sonic Mania. It's not a deal breaker, but it's something I noticed throughout my time with the demo. Of course, this release is far from complete, and there are certainly bugs to be found here, but overall, this is an incredibly polished, fascinating game. It would be interesting to see this project turn into something official, as I suspect it would do quite well for Sega. So with Sonic 2 HD shaping up to be something special then, how about the other game I mentioned earlier? That's right, it's time for the return of Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, a game with a reputation so negative that it almost killed the franchise, at least in some circles. Sonic the Hedgehog is a game that attempted to return to the Sonic Adventure formula, but a whole host of technical and design problems ultimately ruined it. The game is, for all intents and purposes, unfinished. And it's a shame too, as the first showings were promising. The engine is robust, at least for the time, with support for things like full time of day shifting, along with rather detailed visuals. It also runs at 60 frames per second, though with plenty of slowdown. When it finally launched in late 2006, however, it was so broken in so many ways. Near constant loading times destroyed any semblance of pacing, often asking the player to wait more often than actually play. Level design is wildly inconsistent and often broken, so imagine my surprise when one of the releases from Sage this past week was an attempt to revive this awful game on a modern platform. Enter Sonic the Hedgehog for the PC. A group of dedicated creators is working on rebuilding and tweaking this game for the PC using the Unity engine. While the game does share assets with the original release, everything else has been rebuilt from the ground up for modern hardware, and the results are fascinating. Recreating a 3D game like this using an entirely new engine is no small feat, but to do that while simultaneously attempting to improve a game this bad is on another level. For starters, the team certainly picked a strange level to start with, one which highlights just one of many terrible ideas. For this stage, you must carry a human princess, Princess Elise, through the entire stage, effectively limiting your maximum speed, but also making for an obscenely awkward looking experience. Using the homing attack on enemies while holding another character just looks bad, and nothing has changed here. Then there's the mechanic which requires you to hold a shield button to traverse sand traps, but when you run out of energy or the game fails to respond to your button press as it often does, you just kind of clip through the ground. Mercifully, this mechanic is slightly improved in the remake, as you can now engage your shield as you start to sink, returning to the surface. Aside from this tweak, however, the remake doesn't really address any of the fundamental problems in the level design. There are still cheap hits everywhere that you couldn't possibly see coming, bad camera angles, and questionable layouts, but at least it plays better. You see, controls this time are far less twitchy, making it much easier to handle Sonic. Of course, while the basic level design is the same, various obstacles have been removed at certain points, while enemy patterns and item placement can vary slightly. If you play the demo without context of the original game, it won't feel very good at all, but going back to the 2006 release demonstrates that things have indeed improved. Visuals too see a nice boost this time. Anisotropic filtering helps tremendously here. Lods are pushed out further than ever and shadows are much cleaner. The bloom effects are missing this time though, and some of the physics seem toned down, but really these are not critical pieces of the game. Unfortunately, as we've often seen in smaller Unity projects like this, there are some inherent stutters in the PC version that definitely detract from the fluidity. So in that sense, the original Xbox 360 version actually runs this level more smoothly, but still, this is something that could be tweaked in a future update of the remake. 
Ultimately, this is kind of a novel idea, and between this strange remake and the efforts being poured into bringing Sonic Unleashed stages to the PC, we might be looking at the 3D Sonic Team equivalent to the Sonic Mania Team. Perhaps someday, years down the road, these guys will get a chance to build a brand new 3D Sonic game. For now though, this remake is nothing more than a curiosity. On paper, the idea of playing through a version of this game with fewer bugs on a modern machine is interesting, but at its core, the design is just rotten, with so many terrible ideas here. It's a bad game through and through. Perhaps someday I'll break this down in a full 3D Sonic DF Retro episode. What do you guys think? Now, before we finish up this episode, I simply have to talk about last year's big Sage release, Sonic Utopia. I feel that this concept showcases a potential side of 3D Sonic that we've really not seen attempted before. It's an unbelievably freeing and enjoyable experience. 2D Sonic was all about height. Levels had high, middle, and low routes that you could regularly cross between depending on your skill. The 3D games, however, typically focus on very narrow paths, and once they really got going with, like, generations, it was more like a racing game that you reacted to. Utopia, however, takes the multi-level concept and expands it out laterally to create incredibly wide stages instead. This allows for a huge amount of freedom in how you play the game while tempting skilled players to take more visually interesting routes. Being able to see so much of the stage so far into the distance really lends the game a unique feeling. More impressively, the controls are fully up to the task and you'll find yourself nailing jumps and ramps without issue. It just feels incredible to play. Clearly, this is still an early demo, but the concept here is amazing, and I feel that a 3D Sonic game taking this idea from concept to full game would be groundbreaking. After all, Sonic's biggest issue is that he's fast, and doing fast in 3D is tough. You either go for a track-like experience similar to a racing game, or you present a massive, ultra-wide stage like this instead. More than anything else, this is the one Sonic concept I'd like to see take form as a real game. Perhaps someday. But that's all for now. Hopefully you enjoyed this look at some of what the Sonic community has been doing over the past several years. I think with the release of games like Sonic Mania, Freedom Planet, and Spark, we're starting to see that the community can finish projects that are exceptionally high quality. And if you want to check out some of the games featured in this episode, be sure to check out the description below. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like, subscribe, and follow us over on Twitter. And until next time, gotta go fast.